What's up, YouTube? Back here again with another video, and today, yes, we're finally going to finish putting this marmot together. I've got a little series of videos happening on this uh, marmot here, and now I pretty much have it all put together, and we're going to do the final touches. And today, well, we'll figure. I started with the assembly of the frame that you can watch. We've got uh, the part selection for the frame, and today we're going to get into. Uh, kind of layout and how you might want to put together a drone, a f uh, you know, a five inch, six inch, seven inch drone. They're all kind of going to kind of go together the same way. And uh, maybe they can help you out in building your first drone. So with the Marmot, we have a kind of a slam deck design. Okay, so it's, it's pretty short here. We don't have a whole heck of a lot of uh, distance up in here. So it's kind of short. So if you see this, how much space, this is the CL1. And you can see, you know, we're almost double the vertical space here. I mean, I know the top plate isn't on, but the top plate sits right there. So, you know, you could fit three stacks in here and you don't have to get, you know, super crazy, um, you know, trying to get it really tight together. Uh, three stack will fit in here fine. So like a four in one, a flight controller and a VTX, it'll all kind of fit. Uh, you know, it's not as difficult. now. This guy is a little more difficult because it's, again, slammed and you only have like 15, 20 millimeters or so up in here. So with that, if you are a newer builder and you fancy this design of this lower deck, and a lot of them are coming that way, go with a four, you know, individual ESCs. It will give you a lot more space inside of this frame here and it'll make it easier to fit everything in here. Now, that's gonna give you a lot more soldering to do, okay? It's not just plug and play and all that. So if you're comfortable with soldering, I definitely recommend going with separate ESCs and a all-in-one, you know, a PDB flight controller like this, and it'll just make it a lot easier. You can see we just have, you know, we solder it on, we got telemetry and our signal, positive and ground, down into the motor, and it all just fits nice and good. And we don't have to go super crazy um, putting on, you know, getting these stacks all super tight and crazy. So if you're gonna go that route, you got well, I got one tall metal screw that goes through here with a uh, M3 nut, you know, a regular plastic nut, then the, gr uh, the rubber bushings that come with the flight controller and then just a bigger nut so I can kind of finger tighten it and, you know, keep that play. You wanna keep that play in here. So once you get that kind of figured out, now we can see we've got space underneath. And having this space underneath is actually good. Um, it gives you the ability to run your wires under there to keep it all nice and neat and tidy. It also gives you the opportunity to stick your receiver under there if you want. I have mine over here. But if I had a bigger um, VTX up in here and it was kind of didn't have space for that, I would tuck it up underneath. And you would still be able to look under, see the light or what have you. So we got a couple wires running underneath. That also leads us to the capacitor. Now, the capacitor placement can be difficult on a lot of different builds. Uh, again, if you have something like this, it's a lot simpler because you got a lot more space. You just got to worry about it kind of flopping out and falling out. But you probably can just attach it right to the board and let it sit back here because you got the space to work with. I tend to do it this way. Uh, and I have this on a lot of other builds because the space up here seems to be wasted, you know, kind of wasted, depending on where the camera sits. Now, the marmot puts the camera way up here. So you got this whole package of space right here. And this is where I'm going to put, you know, I decide to put all my auxiliary pieces. So we got the capacitor. I got the run cam. Um, you know, UR control, OSD control. So we'll be able to control the camera right from our controller. And then our camera wire is going to come here as well. Got that and then we got the wires for the receiver kind of sticking out over here and everything is going to come up over the front and solder on uh, another thing is if you're doing a buzzer buzzers can be difficult to kind of put them someplace without them falling around or falling out you know these types so i tend to do a nice little short wire and just kind of tuck it down so it's below the line and it's not even if it flops around it's not going to fall out you know it's on wires that are got a little bit of giving them you know it's not a super critical part you know, and then if you get all this in that kind of order, then it gives you this back panel for your VTX. Now, if you don't have 
these 3D printed parts for different frames. Like here is a Skyliner, I got the 3D printed part, and we can kind of see, I mean, I got a Fox Ear in this, and I literally got the same build. Let me see how I can show you. So we got the camera, there's the capacitor, the camera controller is double stuck right there. We got the Fox Ear, the receiver is tucked up underneath, the antenna comes out the back, and back here, I've got a, a Unify strapped down right there, and then we got our Firefly Lost Model Buzzer tied in right there. And then this gives us the ability to get our antennas out of the frame, kind of out of the way, you know, pushed back out this way here. So now if we didn't have this part, uh, you know, the antenna, I would have to strap it in somewhere into the frame. So I would probably, you know, attach it to the top plate and then this would have to go somewhere. So it just makes it a little more difficult. If you can, I highly recommend you get a 3D printed antenna holder. It just makes it so much easier and it makes it, you know, you just know where it goes. Like here's a different version. So your FPV and then your antennas. It just gives it a place to be that's secure, but not, not solid. So it has a little give, but it's secure enough. So I always recommend the 3D printed antenna holder. If you don't have a GoPro, you don't need to get a GoPro one. But here's the one for the Marmot. The camera plate just slides in, the screws go through, and then it's gonna to attach to the camera plate part. And that's gonna be a super secure way to hold the GoPro. Now, Brain 3D, link will be in the description. That's where you get these 3D parts. And they have 3D printed parts for pretty much like all the most popular frames you'll be able to get. Like that, you've seen the CL1, you've seen the Skyliner. Um, this is a reverb for a reverb um, GoPro holder and they have GoPro holders. They got the antenna mounts, they got everything you need. If you got a mount like this, this is gonna be for R9. So it kind of gets it out here and holds it. If you got um, Crossfire or if you just have regular, like an XM Plus or RXSR, they have these mounts for the antennas to go through. So you just run the antenna, two antennas through here Put your tubes in and they do give you the tubes when you buy this type of um, antenna mount. So all that gives us now where we're gonna jam in the where are we gonna jam in the VTX? Because this kind of can be the hardest part. I recommend you buy a bunch of these pigtail leads with a 90 degree. I wish that vendors would just Sent, when they send them out, they send them with the 90 degree because these straight ones have less, you know, less use than the 90 degree. 90 degree gives you a lot more ability because I would be able to stick this right here on the side, have the 90 degree antenna come out and loop around and it would fit much better. I have that kind of in some of my other ones. But I don't have any left, so we're gonna have to figure out a way to jam this in here and I kind of already did. So this is gonna go like that and we've got our antenna uh, just run through the hole here and then we can see here is the antenna for the um, receiver antenna and that just goes out the back and it goes in through here and then this tucks up in there and there you go you can see the bottom of it here so what I'm gonna do and now this isn't the best way to do this but I'm gonna just kind of stick that back because we got that pocket of space in there we can kind of stick that back Kind of push that back enough to where this sits right there. And now one zip tie will go around that and hold that in place. Now, when you're placing different parts in, you gotta keep track of your of the you know electrical conductivity, right? Because this underneath has open pads. So if the open pads or open, you know, anything metal from this VTX touches the bottom of that, it's gonna short. All right, and it's gonna get the whole voltage of this depending on where it connects to. I mean, you got voltage, full voltage running on the corners and everywhere around, so you gotta be real careful. So I chose to just put a little piece of black tape, we'll get that down, and then these wires are gonna run up and solder to where they need to be, and then they'll be in place. All right, so that's everything literally jammed in there. Now, if you had a four and one, you know, this would be a little bit different, but you would still have the space here and the space here. So basically all the difference being is you're gonna have to fight with the space, you know, the vertical space between your two stacks. But beans is that you would wanna put your 
uh, four in one, basically flat to these screws here, then a standoff like that, and then your board right on top and keep it as tight as you can to get it down as low as you can. I mean, you can see here at the, the way this is set, I can maybe just barely get another board on top of here, but it would be getting some pressure from the top plate. Then that also, you know, you kind of have to figure out where this is going to go. So when I'm using a four in one, I like to tuck this down in here then put the flight controller on top. And this is how I, how I like my connector to come out. And then this will get trapped. You look at the top plate. We got two uh, straps. This, this would get trapped in here when you attach the battery. All right, so that's how I do that. Nice and secure. And it gives it, you know, it gives it a little strength to this because it's trapped in the Velcro and it's not just tugging right on the board there, right? Another thing you can kind of figure out is if where the pins on your specific flight controller are, how you kind of want it to sit and where you want different things to go. Like I'm just pulling everything out the front and then wrapping it back over to where it needs to go. But I could run the wires at the side for the um, receiver because the connectors are over here. So you can you kind of use the underneath part and run your wires around to keep it as clean as possible. So, yeah, any questions about uh, putting this stuff together, stick it down in the comments below. I'll try to do my best uh, to help you out. The other thing is camera selection before we go too far. Your frame is going to be basically made for a certain type of camera, right? Different size. There's full size, mini, which this is here, and a micro camera, which this would be a micro size camera. You can see kind of the size difference. You know, this is smaller. So this frame is set up for a mini camera and that's what we have in there. This frame is set up for a micro camera, goes between these grommets. This frame was set up for a full size camera, but with an adapter plate, we've got a micro camera in there. So there are adapter plates for your micro cameras to make it fit full size. There are adapter plates for mini cameras that they come with to make it fit full size. Now also on green 3D, they have these little 3D printed parts that basically shim out the space in here so you can use a micro camera on the Marmot. Also, I've got reports of people just bending these met this metal tab because it's not all that thick, just kind of screwing it in there and getting it tight. But I had a mini camera and I actually like mini cameras. I feel like they're more sturdy, so that's what we're using. But I've got these guys in case I need them. So that's kind of my thought process behind how I kind of put this all together. You know, I start with, okay, what camera fits in there? What's it made for? Do I have it? Do I want to buy it? Whatever that goes. Do I need an adapter or, or whatever? Does this board have camera control capability? Do I want that ability? So that's why this is here. This is an analog OSD. So this makes it digital to go into this board that doesn't have specific camera control connections. Does your board have enough UARTs for all the things you want to do and all the things you need? I recommend you get one that is, has the ability to do your SBUS your, um, and your Smart Audio. They're like the two basics. So if I got two UARTs, one for SBUS, because that's what I use, and a spare UART for Smart Audio, that's minimum, I'm good with that. Now this board has a lot of extra stuff, or it has five total UARTs, so we're gonna do ESC telemetry, Smart audio, we're gonna do telemetry, uh, you know, smart port telemetry, and SBUS and our UR camera control. So that gives us all the ability there. So there you go. That's pretty much my kind of thought process. Hopefully that helps you in putting together a drone and kind of picking parts, how they fit, how they might work. There you go, that's what I got. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one.